What's going on, everybody? Is Welcome to audio? podcast uh, 112. And we are, we have a special guest. I'm getting a little, I'm watching Dave trying to set up his stuff in the background here. Um, listen, before we get into our discussion with Dave Shalott, uh, I would like to mention uh, a, a, a fundraiser or something to, to help the, the needy children and families in Ukraine. I left a, a link down below or in the description. And uh, if you guys could just find anything in your hearts to, to give a donation, that would be very helpful. We will have some giveaways too. We're going to, Joe, I didn't tell you this, but you're in the background, but we are going to have some tool giveaways and stuff like that to help uh, raise some money for that. Um, so please find some, some time, check it out and uh, donate what you can. All right. I do have a video on my dent trainer page and dent time page. So if you want to watch a little bit more about deeper dive of what it is and what it's about, please do that. Uh, the other thing is the mega media event is coming up April 28th, 29th. And then you've got Anson's open house, the 30th. It is my events almost sold out. So we have a pretty good group. I hope a lot of them are actually coming back, but we have some new ones, new people too. And I hope to see you as a new face as well. So don't forget April 28th, 29th, and then the uh, Anson event, open house, April 30th on Saturday. All right. So welcome. Welcome, fellas. How are you guys doing? We got Joe Garcia and, and Dave Shalott. I'm going, Joe, you guys all know that. So Mr. Hello, Shalott. Hello, Dave. How you been, man? Man, you're... Your camera makes you look like you're like you're like 300 pounds, dude. <laughs> like, it was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're oh, did I mute Back you? Oh, chair sorry, there a little bit. There you go. You're you're good. Oh, there we you're go. Good. Hey, is the is the audio good now? Yeah, I sounds clear. Yeah, that yeah. sounds One, good, Dave. Two, three. Okay. Yeah, so like I was leaning back in my chair there a little bit, and it made me look a little bit uh, a little bigger than uh, than I am, of course, you know, but. Uh, it's just the nature of the beast. They say the TV makes no. you look five pounds bigger, right? Yeah, that's what they <laughs> the say. The pod, the podcast makes you look. <laughs> I know you're not that big. Heavier. Dude. I know you're not that big. Yeah. Um, no. So and in all and in all um, in all full disclosure, I had a uh, I had a colonoscopy because same as you, Mike, uh, and a belated happy birthday. I meant to say that to you yesterday, and then we got twisted up on our dates yesterday and today. So. I didn't post anything or send you a message because I'm like, oh, I'll just tell Mike happy birthday. <laughs> but anyway, so considering uh, we're close in age, uh, you know, I did the old 5-0 checkup or for me, 5-1. And uh, and I lost a few pounds, you know, on the, on the liquid diet before you go in for the doctor, you know. Yeah, you know, uh, I was just telling Joe, dude, um, my doctor told me the same thing. It's like, you know, your, your colonoscopy check is coming up. You know, I was like, yeah, I yeah. know. And he goes, well, you know, uh, you you know, we got to numb you. Right. And I was like, well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, feel, I hope, I hope so. He's like, well, do you know why? And I was like, well, because it hurts. He goes, no, it's, it's highly addictive. So it's <laughs> 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 like, nah, nah, dude. I'm going to get that, a new man. doctor, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and they've oh, heard, yeah. they've heard all the jokes before. So don't go down that road either. So, so Dave, we, we, we got you on, man. And uh, yeah. And, and so we're going to talk about, you know, part two of this, because you've heard us talk about this topic before, and, you know, text messaging communication or, or in-person communication, phone communication, and a little bit of wholesale stuff, too. So, I mean, we, we can't let you go without, you know, picking your brain about wholesale. Um, so sure, I'm going to let you steer the ship, because I know you, you, uh, you had some good thoughts about these topics. So what's on your mind well you know both you and joe in the previous few episodes had, had uh, you know gone over estimates and people are now like just texting and joe obviously you're mobile like i am and yeah. and i know mike you run a little bit of a mobile site as well but like you've got brick and mortar that joe and i don't but like the the the, the communication comes in like somebody will pass out your business card right and then you get a text message because that's that's where we are in society today you don't always get a phone call or an email from somebody. I don't get anybody, obviously, in my shop because I don't have brick and mortar. But you get the text message, right? And and regardless of of what your uh, what your business model is like, whether it's mobile or brick and mortar or whatever, 
the 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 last few uh, episodes you guys had talked about estimates and how you communicate and what your style is and how how that all you know kind of transfers and i'm like this is this is critical information for everybody regardless of what their business model is um you know i get text messages from my wholesale accounts as well as my potential retail customers right my individual customers and and i just i think it's i think it's important for all of us to choose our words carefully and have have a script and some consistency in your message right whether you're dealing with uh, 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 wholesale or retail, or if you're doing auction or rental work, whatever, you know, whatever your, your part is in the industry, you've got to have this script and choose your words carefully. So you get the information you need to make a concise estimate, right. To help your customers understand. And then even with what's going on with Paul Corden's, uh, Facebook page with his group, right. With the, with the, uh, uh dollar amounts that are being posted on what's being attained on these repairs, there's a process and a communication that goes with that to get these customers engaged and to educate and explain. But it all comes down to the one thing. That's that's clear communication. That's yeah. right. Yes. That is right. Right. We, we, we're, we're, we're all we're all gonna have our different styles, but I think I think tonight in discussing this, you've got to have your you've got to have chosen your words carefully so you don't offend anybody. But uh, also so that you get the information you need and can convey back in layman's terms to your customer. At 100%, Dave, I, I agree with you. I, we were talking about that. Um, that's one of the reasons why I created that video uh, uh, last week was, was to show the process uh, of that video to help, you know, kind of like, Oh, well, what do you charge? Or what? I didn't know this dent was going to be like this, at least open up the conversation and, and, and kind of, right. I'm kind of just showing what type of customer I want to as well. And Joe, Joe's actually started that process. And then I'm the one that's been doing it as well along with them. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's really good. What do you think, Joe? Yes. I, I think Dave, you know, you, you guys are both correct. I mean, it's, it's all about communication and I'll be honest, you know, as long as I've been doing PDR, I mean, it's shoot, this is like my 24th year, I think or something like that. And, and what, excites me more than anything now is the power of communication and being able to best communicate my message that mm -hmm. I want to, how I'm going to serve my fellow human, you know, and as well as figuring out in a very brief amount of time, whether we're a good fit or not, because if we're not, I'll be the first to say it. And that way, they they can move on with their life and I can move on with mine and, and serve the people that really, truly value what I do. Uh, and there, there's an art to communication. So I, I definitely agree with what you're saying, Dave. Sure. And, and you quantify, just like you said, you quantify that customer. Are you my customer? Right. And yes. and again, through through careful dialogue and the correct questions and the correct words. Right. The correct verbiage. And again, it's a different thing when you're when you're a keyboard warrior texting to that customer who wants an estimate versus uh, someone who shows up in person and then you can gauge them and get that, that interpersonal, you know, that, that personal action. There, yes. it, it doesn't matter, but like, you know, everybody was on and, and I think it was, it was called a month ago, whenever the, uh, when I chimed in, Mike, like I was so, I was so ecstatic with what you and Joe were talking about. And, and it just, it just dawned on me like, I have in my mind, my script, right? It's rehearsed and this is what I text and my predictive text in my phone on my messages already goes to these, these certain set of words that have, you know, been typed in hundreds of times. Right. Yeah, right. And, and it doesn't matter whether you're physically in front of the customer or it's an email request or a text request. You've got to have this, this, this system, you know, this dialogue, and system, and then consistency for yourself, right? Okay. We don't yeah. all have to have the same the same verbiage, but we all have to be consistent. And then that way you're not looking over your shoulder or thinking, uh-oh, did I text him this or did I text her that? Uh-oh, no. I'm, I am text the same thing to the same people, right? Okay. Repeat Dave, customers, new customers, whoever it is, right? Let me ask you this, yeah. Dave. Do you – do you? I, I'm, I'll answer my own question, but I, I, do you find yourself – when you get text messages, are you are you really uh, texting them back, or are you trying to get on the phone with them, or does it depend on the repair? 
I, so I do, I, I'm a chameleon. Okay. Let's go back to the old Shane Jack's piece. You got to be a chameleon and one of his original podcasts, right on PDR college, but like, you've got to be a chameleon. So how did they contact you? And if they contacted me via text, then I'll engage them with text, right? If they contacted me with a phone call, I'll engage them with a phone call back. Does that make sense? Or, yeah, or in nice. communication, if I answer the phone, right? So you're, you're kind of mirror and I, and I kind of, their style. I mirror, I mirror what I think they want. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. It, like, like my first customer this morning had emailed me for a quote, sent me a photo. Uh, his photo skills weren't that great and that's okay. And I'm not too concerned, but um, everything we did was via email until his final instructions this morning. And he said, Hey, at 8 AM, I'm sorry. I'm on a, I'm on a video conference call. Please text me when you arrive and I'll open the garage and you can get started. So like, I just let myself in and started my deal. Right. But his, everything that he communicated to me was via email, even though he had my phone number, you know, and that was an easy one where we could have texted or communicated, but he was a guy, I think that just liked to email and maybe he sits in front of a computer and does emails all day and that's his bag. And, you yeah. know, who I, I'm not here to judge the customer. I'm there to fix their dent and make money yeah, and sure. then move on. Right. So let's mirror what the customer engages you with. It, that's my opinion. I might not yeah. be right, but I'm going to mirror what they do. Uh, and that's why. So, yes, I do find myself engaged in a lot of text oftentimes yeah. and, and try to mirror what that customer starts with. Nick Stark <laughs> says, I prefer a phone call to text. And uh, I I agree with that, Nick. And and Dave, you know, that being said, like with Nick Stark, what what he just said, do you find that with your customers or prospects before they become a customer, the ones that reach out to you via email or text and your dialogue with them is purely through text or, or email, do you find that there's less rapport built with that, with that prospect than if you got on the phone with them? At all, do you feel like there's any uh, any drawback or disadvantage to that? I think you know you you can easily like here we're talking right now verbally, right? This is yes. like a phone call, right? You can convey so much more so quickly, I think, and then you hear the tone of the voice. You can enunciate a little bit. You can change your tone accordingly. You can right. convey so much more through a, through a, a phone call or what we're doing now verbally. Right. Yes. Then you can via text. And that's why you got to be careful. I think when you choose those words, when you choose the text and the email, yes. because it's it's written word, not spoken word. Right. Right. And right. and so absolutely, I think you can easily uh, build rapport more quickly with a phone call than a text. Right. But when you're then in front of the customer, let's just hypothetically say you get through text and you and you and you get to the uh, uh, repair and the appointment date. Mm -hmm. You can immediately build more rapport out of the box when you just walk up and say, good morning, I'm David Shalott from Professional Dent Repair. We have an 8 8 a.m. appointment. And now, but again, you're choosing your words in a professional (laughs) manner when you're in front of the customer as well. So, you know, the rapport piece, I agree with Nick. I agree with you. The phone call is amazing, right? Because you can say so much more so quickly. But it's just a lot of people, boy, they they love they love yeah. this, right? They love yeah. that keyboard warrior text mentality. Like, yeah. I, I, I'm sure I'm not the only one. Your guy's yeah. phone keeps going off after 5 p.m., right? Yep. And all night. Right. Sometimes. And listen, we're, <laughs> we're in the service. We're in the service industry, right? Yes. Our hours don't necessarily match those of our customers. What if you have right. somebody that works the third shift? What if you've got a nurse that works from 2 p.m. until 10 p.m. or 12 midnight, right? Absolutely. What if, right? You've got to, and, and then it's convenient for them. Yes, we all have the silent button on our phone and so on, but like, mm-hmm. I don't answer texts past a certain hour. I right. try to get home and have dinner with my family and set my phone to silent, but like we're in the service industry and at some point you have to respond in order to engage yeah. and they'll respect that if they're a second or third shift uh, worker themselves. Yeah. But, you know, like th- a lot of things go on out of, uh, sometimes I think, out of convenience and or privacy or consideration sometimes like it's easier to text sometimes and say, Hey, when you have a chance, give me a call back. I have a dent. 
I'd like to discuss with you calling, you know, repairing it or text back or whatever it looks like. Right. But like sometimes those people are, are very uh, um, uh, polite and considerate as well, understanding they're texting you at 9 p.m. or 3 a.m. Right. or, you know, we've all gotten that drunk phone call at 2 or 3 a.m. going, oh, I just wrecked my buddy's car. You got to help me now, bro. Right. But <laughs> like, you know, there's there's a way, though. There's a way in a process, I think, for all of us to to engage regardless of in front email, text, uh, 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 a request from the website, right? Whatever it looks like, right? But I just, I, I think that communication piece starts, it, it starts everything, doesn't it? Right? Because if you don't answer, you don't get the business. Yeah, well, it starts I, everything and you yeah. set the tone. I, th I think it's super important, like you said, Dave, have your, ha have your dialogue, have your presentation on point. That's that's what I've been working on. I mean, I've, yep. I'm actually a, a, a attaching a price guide with it, the latest one that Joe get made, and yep. I'm attaching that. I'm I'm giving a long, detailed spiel, not all in one text, but just boom, boom, and then it's 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 explained very well, right? And right. So, like you said, Dave, I think text has an advantage because it's a script, right? And it's and it's tailored for that type of repair, where you can adjust it. But when you're in front of the customer, you also have to rehearse about what you're going to say and counter. You have to be a, a really good actor. And I'm not saying you're trying to fool the customer in any way, shape, or form. But you have to be prepared about what kind of reaction they're going to have, what type of uh, answer they're gonna, face to face. Some people are way more comfortable, like Paul or Joe, getting in front of the a customer. Um, I'm I'm probably fifty fifty, but I know my clients like text. So sure, and and I do on bigger damage. I say, would you mind if I could give you a call? Because that's why they're texting, right? Because they 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 don't want they didn't call. So so I feel like I'm I'm right there with you and. Joe, what, what's your take, dude? What do you been? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, I you obviously said it. You know, I I prefer to get on the phone for the same reasons why what Dave is saying. You know, there's social cues that just don't transfer over in in text. They just don't. But there's got to be a way in which you know Mike and I talk about it, and now we're talking about it with you, Dave. And and that's why I was going to ask, like, so what what I'm getting, Dave, is that you have some canned responses. Uh, to the various general text uh, estimate requests you get, is that yes. is that what I'm reading? Okay, so like, what would uh, yes. if and you don't mind if you could provide us with uh, an example of what do you respond to when somebody just says how much and they just put pictures and and, and a photo, right? Like photo, we yeah. we all get that, right, Joe? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And and I love like. You know, I get texts here. I'm going I'm to go on a little tangent and I'll come right back. Um, so, um, sorry, I just had a little message come through, a <laughs> text message okay. come through right now. So, um, you know, like we've all had it. And I, I usually get it from my wholesale customers sometimes where I get a photo, right, from somebody. And I've got them stored in my in my database. So I know who texted me and I get a photo, right, but nothing else. Yeah. What do you want? Yeah. There's no request other than a photo of damage, right? That's been yep, sent. We get that. And so I chuckle yeah. at that sometimes, you know, when yeah. you get that from a service advisor or a body shop estimator, right? I'm like, yeah. Okay, I'll wait for them to text what they want. It's it's pretty crude. And then crude, somebody right? somebody will be like, some yeah, I know it's very crude. Like you lose, you know, I was raised, I'm old enough, and I think all three of us, and no offense, Joe, but Mike, you know, no, anyway, I, you know I we're old enough where like <laughs> You, when you used to pick up the phone and call someone, I was taught, hello, this is David Shalott. May I speak with Mike Toledo, please? Yes. Right? That yes. was old school phone etiquette when you used to have to get on the party line or when you used to dial yes. phones like this, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. And there was formality, right? And there was dialogue and discourse that went with this, right? And now it's like, hey, bro, how much? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's okay. Right. So, so then I come back with, so now, now I'm back into the question, Joe, I come back with, 
Hi, this is David Shalott from Professional Dent Repair. At your convenience, could you please text a photo of the damage to me? Or if they already texted a photo and nothing else, thank you for the photo. Are you looking for an estimate? Okay. Could you also provide the year, make, and model of the vehicle so I can do a written estimate for you? Right. Or That's if perfect. I need a little more information, could you zoom out, zoom in? Right. But, but it's like, it's simple and to the point and it's concise and it's professional, proper dialogue yes. via text. Right? right. So could you please at your convenience, because maybe they sent something they had saved in their phone from last week when it happened. So right. at your convenience, because maybe they're working, you know, so like I choose those words just carefully enough to be considerate but letting them know I'm engaged and interested, right? Right, right. That makes At sense. At your convenience, could you please provide yeah, me more I, information? I think, well, Joe and I kind of, we talk off camera too. And I think what we're doing is we keep forgetting about the awesome tools that we have on our phone, right? You can, oh my God, dude. You can record your screen. You can break it down. You can record your own voice, you know, screen record what they sent you and then zoom in, yeah. zoom out yeah. and just kind of like, you know, you can do a one minute video breakdown estimate and like you're there. Right. Yeah. And you're kind of like, well, I'm not sure about this, but the main factor, you know, I, I can't really tell you hundred percent because part of the factor is I can't see behind the panel. I'm not sure if there's a brace there, if there's sound deadening. So I don't yeah. think we take enough, basically Dave, uh, advantage of the tools that we have with that phone. Right. Sure. And, and you can now, even if you don't want to do a video, you can do a, a, a recording. A voice recording back to yes. us. Yeah. That's powerful. So, I was going to yeah. mention that, Mike. I I do that quite a bit, especially with my iPhone. I have two numbers. I've got my iPhone number, and then I have a what's called a sideline for the other part of my my business line. But the, on the iPhone one, I can record my voice, and I can say, "Hi, this is Joe Garcia. Thank you for sending the pictures. Uh, here's what you know. Basically, explain it, and I can give my energy." And I feel like a lot of times that is very helpful because it makes them feel a little bit more comfortable, like there's a human on the other side. But it's right. not always possible. What am you I know? doing? Sorry. And, and uh, that's okay. You know, um, like I said, I have my other my sideline, uh, and that doesn't it doesn't have that. It's almost like using an Android uh, uh, device, and they can't send a voice message. So then I have to get creative with my wording. I try to call them first. There we go. Sorry, never mind. That's okay. I try to call them first, but uh, but if they don't respond, I, I've I've sent video response, and you know we're with like a selfie saying hi, I'm Joe Garcia. Thank you for sending this, you know, sending me the pictures, and you know I'm going to send you a brief video that shows a dent similar to yours, and how we fix it. And you know it doesn't always work though, and but it's I think a good way to rule out the the nachos like uh, I think. Uh, John Scotto was was mentioning. He said, uh, is he, "RPM dent repair." That's John Scotto, right, Mike? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was going to get to his comment right there. He says he, yeah, says he, he has a hard yeah. time texting, so uh, he if he needs to know what they're thinking in their tone of voice, um, otherwise he's not sure if it's not your customer. So right. it's it's tough. That's that's not that's uh, that's not Scotto RPM. That's uh, okay. Help me. Yeah, that's John Scotto. Oh, is it John? Yeah, yeah. You, you, that's John. okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, RPM. It, I get him yeah. mixed up with uh, with Ryan uh, RPS. Yeah, that's who I'm thinking is Ryan. Yeah. Okay, sorry, yeah, it's RPS. Sorry. No. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's a great uh, response, Dave. It's super professional, and I feel like just those words right there. Like if I was the super casual, you know modern texter saying hey how much or just send you a picture and just want a price I, I would feel like that would reel me in to kind of speak in your language a little bit you know even though that's yeah. i'm sure that's not always the case so after you present that to them um at what point i'm sure they're going to fire back with how much right and how do you communicate the pricing for uh, through a text message is there an easy way to do that? I mean, other than just throwing a number out there and never hearing from them again. So what, the we, Big Mac, we, the Big Mac is three ninety nine. 
No. <laughs> you you have to have a menu, right? Like Mike and I have talked about this on previous podcasts, right, Mike? Like yeah, I mean, you've got your pricing. We have our pricing guide now, right? We have our menu. You can't debate it. You can't discuss it. You can't argue with it. This is the deal. Yes, of course, we'll have variables, but like, so, so Joe, my point then when it gets to the, the, the time for that nut and bolt, mm -hmm. you take a photo, Mike, you're so right. These phones are so powerful and incredible. I got to put my headphones in a little stronger there, but like the, these, these phones are incredible. You can do everything from them, right? Yes. You take a photo, you can attach it. You can attach your customer's text photo to the estimate, right? You can scale it. You can zoom in, you can do whatever you need to do. And then Joe, I just simply go into mobile tech RX and I type in, you know, the year make and model, the information I have, it pulls it up. I guess the color because usually I'm pretty good about that, but you get the color code, right? You, you have a picture of the vehicle on your estimate on mobile tech RX. Nice. I'm not, I'm not negating your pricing guide that, that Mike yeah. sent me or mine or yours. No, that's but okay. Like Mobile Tech I, RX is so yeah. easy and professional to yeah. use, and so are some of the other. So are some of the other platforms. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but you you climb in, you go year, make, model, VIN, blah blah blah, whatever information you have, color, a picture of that car comes up. You check the box on the panel or panels that are damaged. You price it out accordingly. You add your R and I, your contingency factors, mm -hmm. and it spits it out. And then you you can easily do a screenshot and text that back, right? Like, yes. I think most people do this. I really do. This isn't rocket science. But when you text it back, you, you don't just leave it blank. Don't, don't do to them what they did to you with a picture of the damage going, how much, bro? No, yeah. don't do that. Yeah. Like, engage. Engage and communicate and choose your words. And send that text screenshot of the estimate back and say, my process removes the damage. You know, I manipulate the metal from behind the damage. I don't use body filler, paintwork. You guys choose the words you want to use, right? But like, right. I don't report to Carfax. I don't report to an insurance agency. This is between you and me. I'm mobile. I can do the repair at your home or office for your convenience. Like there are so many great words to use and yeah. communicate and convey what you do. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh shit, you come to me? Well, yeah. that's an option for me, Joe, obviously, but like, yes. Or if you have a brick and mortar, my address is so-and-so. We offer loaner cars, whatever, you know, whatever, sure. whatever yeah. your, your business model looks like, use right. the words to convey and to promote. Right. So, yes. so my, my general, my general statement back is my process manipulates the metal back to its original position without using body filler or repainting. I don't yes. report to Carfax or any insurance agency. This is all in my head, right? Um, and I'm mobile and can meet you at your home or office for your convenience, right? right. You can say like you can do the repair on site. You choose the words, right? But it's professional. It's engaging. You're showing mm -hmm. an interest. You want to do the work. You're willing to come to them. You're willing to schedule, like, you know. Yeah. And then the next thing we need to do is mirror our calendars or something like this, right? There's something yeah. that's just like magical when you do that and you send them that text photo of the professional estimate with a photo of their car that pops up and they're like oh that's my car yeah yeah scotto okay. says right. hi dave i see scotto's uh <laughs> comment there thanks john <laughs> hey that, john how cute. are you how are you john <laughs> listen i i i I've been testing both ways here. Okay. I, I love mobile tech RX. And yep. I, matter of fact, I don't think there's no such thing as a bad price guide. And long, it, 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 as long as, as long as it's at, you know, you're getting the price you want. It's consistent that the consistency and a yes. menu. So they can't discuss yeah. or argue your pricing. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And, and the reason why I, I liked the <clears throat> price guide that, we have that Joe and I have right for, for my phone is because I can quickly bring it up. Right. And, right. and show them like, this is, this is the reason why we're, we're right here. 
I kind of play with both of them, Dave. I feel like, it, you know, it takes me 10 minutes really to sit there five to 10 minutes to put all the information in on the mobile tech RX. I do do that on a bigger damage. If it's a door ding or, or smaller dent, maybe two to three inches, I will use the little quick price guide as a sure. reference. Um, I just, I think it's just time management for, based on what I choose to do. And I do do a lot of what you just said. Heck, if it's a nice involved repair, I'll actually record me going into Mobile Tech RX and explaining as I'm doing this. So as so they can understand the process of how I'm getting to their number, shall I say. Um, I just think we have we have a way more advantages of stuff. You have to have a script. You have to have great dialogue. We call it in the real world copyright. If your copyright's not really good, uh, it, it's kind of like writing a, um, a a funnel, click funnel, something. You 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 got to hook them right. You you right. your opening words are are very important. How you communicate with them. Yeah. You better get good at text messaging communication because that unfortunately is the way it's going. Um, yeah, yeah. so you have to be really good at that. And, yeah. and that's, that's where I'm at at this. Yes. That, that's the world we live in now. And it's very important. And, and what you just described, Dave, you know, you, you, uh, showing, like you said, the, their car on that screenshot of your estimate of your, on mobile tech RX or whatever software you use, seeing that that looks professional as hell. That's, you know, us being mobile guys, Dave, like there's a, there's kind of a stereotype to be in the shade tree fix it, man. You know, like this, we're kind of like right. gypsies, you know, but you show that that's a weapon, man, as far as I'm concerned, you know, so that, you know, Bravo on that. And as far as what you said, you know, negating whatever mic or I are using, if it's different, we're here for perspective. We're here to share our perspective and we're here to hear your perspective and our audience perspectives. That's how we learn. That's how we take, we, you know, Mike and I don't have all the answers to everything. And, and that's why you're here, Dave, you know, and that's why we have these conversations. We, I love hearing different perspectives because I, I'm not married to any one idea, you know, and neither is Mike. And I don't think you are either, Dave. We, we take on new, new tactics and we implement them and we're better for it. So by all means, yeah. negate yeah. all you want, you know. Um, in the meantime, uh, I think that, the argument that I'll hear from a lot of guys, and I talk to just like you guys, I talk to a lot of dent guys. And often what I'm hearing is, you know, the same thing. No, you know, the price guy doesn't work. Nobody wants to pay those prices. And I think the argument might be is like, and this is something that I am very challenged with is anytime I'm putting prices on that text, I know there's a chance that I may never hear from them again, no matter how professional my my presentation was of it um what's what do you say about that dave like i'm sure that you don't get them all i'm sure it, it works for for some people but what would you tell the dent guy who's asking that right now saying what about when they just ignore me or ghost me as they say because the price was too high yeah, hold that thought. Hold that thought. Uh, everybody, we appreciate you guys commenting. We can't always get to everybody. We can't stop the conversation sometime right in the middle of it. I we do appreciate you guys asking some questions. We will get to those to those questions later uh, that you have. Um, so don't think we're trying to ignore you undeliberately. We're just trying to um, trying to stay on track. So sorry, guys. Um, but we appreciate. Hi, you Dale. Guys. Hi, Dale. <laughs> we're here. Sorry, yeah. Dale. You still what was what was hey, Jerry Kirk, I saw that. Yeah, Corey. Yeah. You, got, you got a little upset, but uh, it's it's yeah, it comes with the territory. Um, so, Dave, go ahead and finish your thought, bro. Good call. Well, you know, if, if, if this is a numbers game, right? Just like any sales piece, right? There's a percentage closure, percentage sales, and there are those that are not your customers, the nachos, mm -hmm. right? So, like, I think the three of us, obviously – where we are in our position, in our lives, in our career, in the industry. Oh, this is, this is going to sound bad. Okay. And I'm sorry for the younger technicians that are trying like heck to drive their business and get traction. And they, they maybe, I don't want to say don't have enough business, but you know, they're new into the industry or newer. Oh man. The three okay. of us right now, 
okay, you're not our customer. And then we move on, right? There's yeah. a sales percentage closing number that exists, right? I don't care what industry you're in. That's the fact. Yep. Okay. It could be the waitress, the waiter at the restaurant trying to sell you a dessert or an appetizer. Yeah. It doesn't matter, right? There's a close percentage and sometimes it's just not your customer. Right. And that's, that's okay. Then it frees you up to move on to those that are. So yes, this happens, right? There's a way though, I think, yes, of course we can negotiate a little bit if you'd like, that's fine. You can make some price adjustments. You can feel your customer out that active, engaged communication on the phone, right? Yes. You're going to get a better, better response verbiage than you are text, right? The spoken word, not the written word, but yes. there's going to be a percentage that you don't get period. End of discussion. It is what it is. It's a, it's a percentage game. It's a numbers game. And so you yeah. can't beat yourself up over it if you don't get it all either. Right. It's yeah. okay. I think that's, do you want to eat at what... Bonanza or do you want to eat at Morton? Yeah. what well, that's just right. I mean, joe and i've talked about this we talk about off camera Dave. Exactly. we we do all that and and that's the i think that's the turning point when you when you can actually let go yeah. and understand that go that you know what i can fix that dent but yeah. they're just not my customer that's not my customer right, right. you're not yeah. all of a sudden dropping your pants because like oh okay i'm gonna go against my own price guide today because yeah. i need that i need to get that money i was a little slow right that that tarnishes your your thinking and it dilutes your brand it confuses yourself and it confuses your customer um yeah. and you you're, you're right it's kind of like playing monopoly it's going to jail right you start all over again dude i yeah. i feel like that's what i do to myself i'm like i'm i'm going backwards right and gentlemen I, there's a there's a term i learned this this uh, recently and it, it's pretty cool it's called fail forward right as long as you're, you're, you're moving forward, you're going to fail, but as long as you're failing forward, right? Yeah. You're not failing backwards. And I think that's, that's really uh, has something to do with what we do. We, we have to also in, embrace the, the slow times, man. I mean, th that's yeah. where people give up, right? Yeah, they, right. Or they, they, right? They don't give it enough time. Oh, man, nobody, nobody, uh, nobody bid on my, on my new pricing today. Yeah. So uh, tomorrow I'm going to go back. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. it, they don't stay in the trenches right. really measuring it out. How do you know it didn't work when you're it's not challenging? It, it is challenging yeah. and it really is a, a, a mind game. Um, you know, we, I think what we have to do is we have to be okay with walking away from a deal. You know, sometimes that's a deal we don't want. You don't, you just don't realize it yet. None of us like the rejection, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm learning. Mm -hmm. That's something I'm journeying through myself is, trying to wrap my head in you know, one of my new year's resolutions this year. And Mike and I discussed it a few episodes back was like, I was ignoring calls, Dave, whether they were text or, or voice calls, because I was tired of, you know, just giving my best effort to communicate or what I felt was my best effort. And they, they weren't responding to it. It wasn't resonating with them and I would lose the opportunity. So I felt, so I got to where I was avoiding the calls and I was like, oh, hold on, man, you're a business dude. You can't be just ignoring the calls. You have to take these calls. And so I implemented a little mind game for myself of just, and I mentioned it before of just using a simple call log and writing down these calls, whether it was voice, text, or email and write down the date, the time, their name of when, when this request came in. Uh, even a little description on on what it was. Now I admit I don't fill in all those those slots anymore because I'm kind of I found that I when I'm communicating with them I'm in a you know I'm quickly jotting down the most important details. But what happens there is it keeps me super focused, not only and present on this person who I'm communicating with again, whether it's verbal or through text or through email, and I feel like they. Feel that energy that of my being present. And sometimes if it's a if if it's a nacho, that scares the shit out of them, I think. It they they want to bolt, and that's fine because that was not my customer. But in the meantime, for the right customer, man, it is a match made in heaven. It's a high value client, high high ticket, which is where I want to be. Because why high ticket? Not because I'm greedy SOB, but because when I get paid more. 
to do that repair, I can be much more present and do the best quality work that I'm, I, I can offer, which is what that particular customer is yeah. searching for. You're not doubting that you could have said, damn, I, man, yeah. I can make three or four dents. You know what I mean? Like, do, because, because when we do big dents, it's the reason why we think that way is because we didn't charge enough for the, for the big dent we're doing. Right. Or the, the time consuming repair. Um, I just feel, I just feel like there's a lot of things that we do and we want to do, but we give up way too easy. We, yeah. we don't give ourselves enough time to measure consistency uh, about what we do. Right. Um, what do you think, Dave? Absolutely. And, and again, if you start doing that or second guessing or going against the guide, you, you, you've just taken the consistency out of your game. Right. Yeah. And yes, we're fortunate. And, and a lot of us in the industry are not just the three of us here tonight. A lot of our, our fellow repairers are, uh, you know, we're, we're in a position where we can say no because we'll move on to the next job. Right. And there are those that aren't in that position yet. But you when you get to that point where you can make that stance and deliver your business changes, your mindset changes. You, you just you only want to do what makes sense. Right. It becomes a smart business decision after the emotion and the fact of losing it is gone or after the thought that, Oh my God, they didn't want to pay this or yeah. that's all head trash and it all goes away. And then you can go with your consistency and then you're more successful as a result. Yeah. Right. Dave, have, and Joe, have you guys ever real? I mean, I know you have, cause you've been in the game a long time, but how many techs out there do you think who are maybe watching this and maybe you guys watching this, how many of you or know somebody that's actually sat down, wrote down all the expenses that they have, not only to run their business, but the, to keep their making their mortgage payment, yeah. put their kids to school, right. put clothes on them, all that. Add that up, the necessities in a month, and then divide that per day, how much do you have to make? Not how much you can live off of, but the profit, what's your profit margin? Wow. And a lot of people will say, well, if I'm making 20, 25% profit, 50% profit, a 50% profit's pretty good, but why not make 80% profit, 75% profit, 90% profit? I don't know 90 is pushing it, but 80 is still very good. But yeah. we just throw a number and hopefully, you know, we just feel like, oh, that sounds good, but we don't really do the math about what it takes to run a business. And I think once somebody grasps on what their business expenses are combined with their, their, their normal living expenses, I think you'll get a real grasp why you need a price guide, why you need to stick to being consistent a, about making smart business decisions, uh, as you mentioned, Dave. Yeah. Who, who's talked to their accountant about what it costs to drive to the next job? Anybody? That's a question mark for everybody out there, okay? If you haven't and you don't have an accountant helping you with that business and understanding that and you're only filing your own taxes, that's fine. That's your choice. But when you get professional help and you surround yourself with successful people and you get the, that information, your mindset changes dramatically, right? It's like Dave Ramsey saying, hey, when you get to that point or you pay off your house or you start looking at it and you have a budget, you start thinking differently, right? Your mind focuses differently. You no longer want to have credit card debt, uh, car payment debt, right? Like you, you get this laser focused as Dave Ramsey says, right? Why don't we do that? It's very simple and easy. And the accountant doesn't cost a lot of money, mm -hmm. right? It really doesn't. And then you get that true inside uh, uh, retrospect, that, that vision that, oh my God, your repair starts the minute I leave the last repair I'm doing. That yeah. clock ticks yeah. as soon as you pack your tools. And for me and Joe, obviously running mobile, my next yeah. client's job starts the minute I leave that previous customer's repair, right? And there's a yeah. cost associated in driving from A to B. That's simple, right. Right. plain accounting, right? And now that gas is, how much is it in California, Mike? Fuck, don't tell me. Six dollars. Six bucks, yeah. Cents. yeah. Yeah. bloody hell and we bitch but look you, you guys know i've lived in europe for a few years okay i'm not freaking out about that but it's like i think i was this morning i think i was 438 at costco right and normally i'm normally around here we're about 450 to 490 
give or take was where we're at here in the Phoenix area. But like, you've got to factor these things into your business. The cost of the drive, the insurance, the mileage, the wear and tear, the tires, the brakes, the oil, blah, blah, blah. It sounds boring, but you've got to factor it into your business. Yeah, right? That, that's right. I mean, I, it just blows me away that in what, you know, I, I'm not going to get into, it, you know, pointing fingers and stuff, but, you know, we're all trying to help motivate everybody to be on the same page. And, and yeah. I got a lot of flack for, for posting that video. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw that. Um, I'm re- Listen, I'm ready to fight that fight on your behalf, dude. Let's go. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell a you story. Got, I got Can I back. interrupt? I'm sorry. I'm, no, no, no. I, feel like I'm say, I, I got a lot of flack for it, uh, I'm, it, I'm it but ready, I dude. don't mind getting <laughs> flack from people who don't understand the value of PDR. I get I, what blows me away is other dent guys <clears throat> complaining that I charge too high, and then they say they can fix it faster. Mike, I almost chimed in because you know I'm not one that's at a loss for words and not afraid to scrap. <laughs> <laughs> I bit my tongue. Maybe I should have jumped in on that because, hey, you know what? Here's the deal. Can I cuss on this podcast? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Who's that fucking guy to say <laughs> what is too high? Is he paying California real estate prices for That's brick and right. mortar? Yeah. Shut yeah. your hole. You. <laughs> <laughs> I was so, Mike, I'm so with you on that, right? Like, are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. No. That that response was that was again. That response is from the Nacho Dent guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Nacho Dent guy. There you go. That's yeah. it. I, Sorry. I, I, Listen, I, I, I'm, I go. I get it, right? Like I get <laughs> it's head trash, man. Get it out of your head. What was that guy's name? Yeah. But like, really, like seriously, go pay two, three, four, five, ten grand a month in rent and start a business and see what you need to do to cover that nut in order to then pay your mortgage yourself, yeah. your kids braces, the new roof on your house, the brakes yeah. on your wife's car, the new Rolex you want to wear. Tell me what it costs then for you to run your business, right? Like that, that response was so perfect for now where we are, right? This parlay into this part of the, the conversation. I'm just like, yeah. are you kidding me? And no, okay, you might not command every penny in every market. I understand that. We've talked about this time and time again, but it's a guide. It's a price guide. You've got to have a formula and a menu and a base and a standard and consistency. Yeah. And it might be $500 on the West Coast because you got brick and mortar and exorbitant taxes and Governor Newsom. And I'm sorry for you, Mike. And it might not be that much in Tennessee or Texas or Arizona, but it might be because Arizona is being flooded with Californians who are used to paying your prices. <laughs> anyway, like, but you know, you can't, you can't, you can't make that kind of statement. That's not a fair statement based on a national structure, right? Because this country is 5,000 miles wide. You can't make that, that broad statement. Right. right. And yeah. I'm so appreciative of your video, Mike. And here's why. Because you and a lot of other guys are doing that, I'm not quite as tech savvy or as you know in that position to do it. I'm not. I'm not building this huge dent time brand. I'm going to tell you something else I learned about you today, Mike. But anyway, like the video was absolutely perfect, right? Paul Corden's explanations with the drawing, the labeling. Here's where we are. This is the distance. This is the body line, edge of the panel. Blah. That that's perfect, right? I'm going to tell you what I got on a hail roof and you guys are going to shit your pants, but it's perfect because you're defining and explaining and justifying why you are where you are. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. And it's a map and a menu to what it costs. End of discussion. And your costs exceed the norm, Mike, in San Diego. It is what it is, right? Joe, your Mm -hmm. costs exceed the norm. It is what it is. The people yes. in Chicago, in New York, in Miami, right? In these hot, high-dollar markets, there's a different dynamic, <clears throat> certainly with a brick and mortar. Yeah. Okay. So I had a customer on a Friday night start texting me and asking me for my video presentation on what I'm going to do, how long it's going to take, why the repair costs so much. And I sent him my mobile tech uh, RX estimate, my little scripted dialogue. And I got engaged with this guy until 8 p.m. on Friday night, and I fired him as a customer. I didn't even, I was done. Because it kept going back to, and he kept throwing videos from the internet in my face. Well, look at what so-and-so did, and it only cost X, right? That kind of comparative thing. And I said, listen, I'm terribly sorry, but 
This is the price. This is professional dent repair. You're in Phoenix. We're not messing around. This is the deal. Take it or leave it. And I was professional, right? And, and my wife helped me with that because I was on my second or third <laughs> Manhattan. And I just, but I, it just been got there, to Dave. Be too much, right? Where that customer kept pushing. And I wished I had a video though, Mike. I wished I had your video from last week, whenever it was, three weeks ago or a month ago. Because then I would have thrown that back in his face and said, listen, I'm sorry. We may not see eye to eye. I might not be the right repairer for you. And that's okay. But I wish you the best of luck and, you know, happy hunting, you know. Yeah, right. I'd like to judge after the repair is done. If you'd like a second opinion, I'll do the reinspection for you. Yeah, you know, yeah. but like yeah. it just I, but I, at 8 p.m. on a Friday night. Again, here we are. We're back to that piece. And yeah. I'm pretty. Listen, I've got three boys and I'm pretty damn patient. But yeah. at 8 p.m. on Friday night, I'm like, we're, I'm not going to continue on and engage this. I'm sorry. I don't yeah. mind losing that customer. That is what it is. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah, that's and, tough. That's and, been the but tough. that video that video is amazing, Mike. I love that. Well, thanks, Joe. Joe inspired me to do that type of repair. I mean, Paul yeah. helped set up the the all the things. We I got a little piece of Chris, Chris. Uh, Chris from Dentless Chris Ray, Touch did yeah. something similar to it, you yeah. know, or his yeah. version of it. And yeah, I just said, you know what, let me do something of my version and, and, and the way I'm doing it. it and I want to continue to do videos like that. It's, it, this is the thing, Dave and Joe. One video ain't going to do it. Oh, oh, I did my video. I you know that's yeah. it. You know, I did. No, mofo, you got to keep doing those videos. You got to keep doing it. Do it on every type of repair. Maybe it's so what yeah. it's the same door type of door ding. Do it again. Do it as yeah. much as you can. Get the consistency part because you're building your brand going after yeah. that avatar, that that ideal avatar client you want, right? Yeah. So you're already kind of filtering it out. I'm not afraid. Like you said, Dave, we, we've come to a, a point in our careers where we're not playing around no more, right? We yeah. we understand that we we did that. We already went through, went for the, let me grab every customer. Let me grab every customer. And yeah. really at the end of the day, where we're doing these customers, we have that thought process of going behind us, you know, going, man, we should have charged more, man. This sucks, man. You know, and we all know the quality doesn't turn out great when you have that mindset in the middle of the repairs. Yeah. And, and then you stoop down and, and play the low ball game with yourself and you negotiate against yourself and you, and you let the client win and they win the wrong way, shall I say. And really they're not winning at all. Even if they get the price they want and you did a great job, you're not really happy that you did the job and you're not happy to see them again because their expectations and their mindset is I want that same price again. Cause if your prices go up again, the next time you see them, well, now you have an uphill battle because you didn't yeah. stay consistent about your convictions about how you're going to run your business. It comes right. in full circle. Right. And it does. It really does. And and being the high price guy, you know, I mean, we, we've Mike, you and I have chosen to be that in our markets consciously. The other side of that is, you know, we've talked about the we, you know, we do lose those opportunities that, you know, where they just were on the cheap. But. The other side of that is that people come to know us as the high priced guy. So when they call us, it's no question about it. You know, repeat or sometimes cost, it's sometimes it's customers that don't regularly use us, but they'll use us when when they need dent time or dent Evo quality. And I'm sure the same is for you, Dave, like your your wholesale clients. I bet I bet you you have some clients that only use you when their guy can't fix it. Am I, am I wrong? You're not wrong. Okay. And so when they do call you, if they've used you in the past, they already know that your, your price is going to be, they're already educated to your price, right? Correct. Yeah. And that's the flip again, side through, of being, again, being the high thoughtful, price guy. Right. Thought, thoughtful words though, and communication and education, right? Like, Hey, I, and I'm fighting right now. And you guys may or may not know this, but I'm fighting for my Toyota store that I've had for quite a while here. And it is what it is, right? It's a numbers game. And now I'm subject to it. And I'm fighting the uphill battle instead of the driving battle. I used to be in the driver's seat and I'm 
now I'm hanging on to the bumper, right? And that's okay. These are minor issues and, and I'll get through it and I'll battle. But when it absolutely, you know, it's the old sex commercial, isn't it? When it absolutely positively has to be there, right? You remember that old ad, you know, and they call you for that. And now my Toyota store is calling me for the WEOs that aren't being done properly by the cheap vendor that they've gone with. And that's okay. And I show up and I rock out, not quite full retail, but certainly not my wholesale rate. And I rock it out and it is what it is. And I'm making, yeah. I don't want to say almost as much because that's a little bit of a, a stretch, but I'm making darn good money on the handful of cars I repair every month versus yeah. the volume that I used to have, you know, on the, on the, on the volume pricing. And yeah. I kind of laugh and I keep, I have this open dialogue with the used car director and I laugh and I'm like, are you happy with me charging you almost full retail for the one or two or three jobs a week I'm doing? Yeah. You, yeah. you could have had this done previously and your cheap guy is costing you money if, if he was to look at that math and work it backwards, right? And that's okay. Yeah. At yeah. some right. point, the realization will come or I'll fight the battle at the general manager level, but that's another issue. But like, absolutely. And, and why not? They're no longer providing the volume. Guess where their price went? Right. Uh, that's a yeah. no-brainer, right? That's just simple business economics. Davo says, you know, he feels, you know, comfortable doing all that way. I do. I kind of, I do the same thing, kind of similar to that. I will. He's younger than we are. He's savvy. He, he is. He's, he's savvy, dude. He, he is. Um, I'm jealous. I agree with you, Dave, on that. <laughs> Nick, I'm not sure what you're, what you're, you know, what I, I I'm, I'm trying to look at your last question, but you said, uh, can I ask you what I think about rap rapid PDR repair price? Am I selling myself short and should I stick to mobile tech RX price guide? I would like to keep the industry strong. So, I mean, if you're doing a, a true rapid PDR repair, repair, you're probably starting somewhere in the $195 range. It's going to, you're going to pull it two or three times and that's it. You ain't going to tap down. You ain't going to go inside and you ain't going to do nothing. And then it jumps up to 800 1500 i i don't know okay i'm just throwing the number out but it's got to be way high enough i don't think there's nothing wrong with that because again if you're fishing for that if you see a big dent customer you hit them with one big giant price um you have a 50 50 chance actually i think lower than that but you have 50 chance 50 percent chance you'll get them you know, um, you'll probably have an 80 percent success rate if you have the rapid pdr repair because you still even if they just choose, they think they want rapid PDR repair, you have an opportunity to upsell them for the second option. So that's why I feel like it's very important. So I don't, I hope that answers your question, Nick. So um, maybe help, help me, help me, Mike. Do you know Nick? I don't know Nick. Personally, I don't know him. No. So my question the rapid repair to me means something different. Okay. Rapid, so re rapid repair is a term that Penske uses. For their uh, for their internal for their in house uh, cosmetic uh, solutions that they have at, at select locations under mm -hmm. under the Penske you know the big Penske automotive umbrella on a, on a wholesale trade so okay oh, so he gives them four hours I, I'm wondering if Nick I'm wondering if Nick is using Penske's rapid repair term no he's using he's, I see he's, I see I see what he just posted there yeah yeah he's listening he's uh, talking yeah. about the um, the rapid like the cold glue. Yeah, just something quick and easy, rough it out yeah. and be done with it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Dave, we, we had a conversation a couple episodes back where we did a, a show on what what Mike calls rapid repairs. And it's basically, yes. like he said, cold glue something out. And we basically went back and forth and I told him why his idea sucked. And he told me why my idea sucked and, you know, kind of went back sure. and forth. <laughs> I, I might have been on vacation we that saying. week and didn't catch okay. the podcast. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, Anything you guys want to add to this? Because uh, I've got to run pretty soon, dude. Unless you guys want I, to keep going, I'd like to add something. Um, yeah. You know, first of all, Dave. I, you know, I'm sorry that you're going through that with your Toyota store, man. I feel your pain. I went through that Minor with issues. a huge account a couple years ago, and I still feel the the re, uh, repercussions from that. And um, and I look back at you know how I could have done things differently, and I certainly could have, um, but. Uh, it's interesting that you brought that up today because, Dave, uh, um, my friend Chris Brown and I were talking earlier today uh, specifically about, uh, you know, what happens when when that goes when when your dealer client uh, relationship starts to go that direction. 
it's more and more common now because there's just such a high supply of dent guys, especially on the wholesale level. So it's, it's, I think it's happening to a lot of us. And, uh, you know, I think that's a, this is the groundwork for another show in the future. And I think we should have you back on Dave and we, we should talk about that. Cause I think a lot of guys want to know, you know, what is, what are ways to deal with it? And it sounds like you're reinventing yourself already within that, within that client uh, relationship. Well, I'm, I'm diversified enough as well. So, you know, like, I don't want to say it wasn't a big hit because that would be a lie, but you know, I'm diversified enough so that I, I'd like to have the, I'd like to have that account and, and I'd like to have the account because I believe in that, yeah, in that dealership group's principles, right? They don't work their people from 7 a.m. until 9 p.m. every day and demand everything. They're a very giving, uh, fiercely loyal, wonderful behemoth in the auto industry to work for. But, you know, at the same token, that's okay. It's Again, it's a numbers game. It's It was mine to lose. You know, there are a couple of circumstances around it, including some of my travel for, for Kiko, and I'm not blaming anyone. Those were my choices. But... You know, the used car director and I have had the conversation, hey, this new company can't do what you do. Yeah. And I haven't quite gotten over that hump with him yet, and that's okay. The fact of the matter is they were there when I wasn't on a particular issue or, you know, it, it, again, it's timing. That's how I got the account, right? Yeah. And then I lost it the same way, which is kind of ironic in a way because I always preach, well, it's mine to lose, and here I am. But that's okay. I can eat a little crow. You dig. You learn, you grow, you change yes. your vocabulary, right? Like, and again, I uh, same thing. A customer texts me from a dealership. Well, hey, help me with this. Is this customer pay? Is this a we owe? Did something happen in service to the car? Right? Again, the, back to the communication piece on the on the on the overtone of this this podcast is how do you communicate with that customer? Whether it's wholesale, retail, you know, industrial, it doesn't matter. But you've got to be concise and get the information you need. And I have the information I need on this particular account. Uh, and I have all the information I need, quite honestly. And I keep getting the WIO work through service, you know, on the cars that are damaged that haven't, can't, won't, didn't, whatever, from the other vendor. And I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and sling mud, excuse me. <coughs> I'm not going to sling mud about, about their repairability or quality. That's not my place. But the fact remains, when it has to be done, they call me and I perform. And I don't mind being second fiddle. I don't mind being second fiddle at a higher price. You know why? Because now it's quality versus quantity. So again, back to my little okay. statement, somebody, maybe Nick even said, I want to eat at Morton's. Do you want to eat at the high dollar steakhouse or do you want to go to Bonanza or Ponderosa, right? And those are gone, of course, nowadays. But like, you know, do you want to eat that chop, that chop steak? Or do you want to eat prime grade tonight? And USDA grade. There's AB. no different, right? <laughs> we want to be we want to be the prime grade in our industry, right? There's nothing wrong with a high priced dent guy. Do nope. you know what I? I don't know. I don't, I don't know why we care. Why are we Why are you even talking about? It? We why just do we care? Our own business. Why Why do we care? Why Why do yeah, we we're care? Yeah, we're done. Right? Mike, forget the podcast and education. <laughs> Screw everybody. Why yeah. do we care anymore? All right, you guys, go ahead. Like, <laughs> get on your own horse and ride. Good luck. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, good luck, <laughs> Hope you fall right. off. That's some advice. <laughs> no, I don't. That's why we're here. You know what? We want to try and help and grow. We want to try and help and grow and educate. That's why we're here. Okay. We and care. a few people here, listen. Guys are better I, men than I. Then, statistically wise, there's less than ten percent of the people here will take our advice and consistently do it. Yeah, that's what's crazy. So, Number, anyway, back to my point: it's a numbers game, right? It is. It's a numbers game. So. At the end of the day, the choice game, is right? ours. Yeah, the choice is ours. Nobody's telling these guys to be price takers. They're telling themselves to be that. Yeah. It, it. We have the choice. And yep. we have to stick with our choice and, and know why we made that choice. So. All right. Ladies and gentlemen. Statistically, the number one day for colonoscopy is Tuesday. <laughs> He's the numbers Tuesday. game. All right. <laughs> you guys, 
thanks a lot for watching. We appreciate you guys hanging in there. Uh, we'll catch you guys later on the next podcast. Joe and I are going to try to shoot for Mondays because we don't want to overlap on somebody. We're trying not to do that right now, but apparently we went over. Um, so we will try to do it on Mondays. I don't think we got any, there's no podcast going on Mondays. I don't think so. Anyways, we'll see you guys later on the next episode. Dave, thanks a lot for coming on. We appreciate you. Thank Love you, you guys. Dave. See ya. Love the industry.